let's take a look at adding editor warnings to our custom classes. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to need to do to, in order to create these warnings to allow your user or maybe you're creating an add-on with some custom nodes uh, to inform them that maybe a parent uh, or it needs a certain type of node as a parent or it needs a certain type of node as a child um, or maybe there's a property that the user needs to fill out and it's not something that you could set as a default. I don't know, maybe. Or maybe it's just something that you want to do within your own project. Um, maybe just to give you reminders uh, as you're going. Well, obviously, the first thing you're going to need to do is come down to your files, wherever you have them, create a new script uh, for your class. And here's what I'm setting out here. So I've just given it an icon. I'm just using the Gato icon. If you do set an icon, you're going to need to restart the editor for that to update. I've given it a class name, the Magic Controller. It's extending node 2D. And in order for these editor, uh, these editor to work, these editor warnings to work, we have to use the tool key at the top, just like we would do if we were creating an add-on. All right. So normally when you go ahead, you can create, go ahead and say var. I was just using path. And I was just making this a no path type, right? We go ahead, we create it. And I'll even go ahead and just add this into our scene for now. Click on it. We don't see anything. We think about, it. oh, right. That's certain. We need to make it an export in order to see it inside of our inspector. And now we do that. We see that we can click, we can assign it to whatever we want. Cool. Awesome. That works, but maybe Maybe you have a habit of forgetting to set these things uh, and you want to do it, set it yourself. So if we take a look here, we can see every time we assign this in the inspector, we can take a look down in our output. And every time we do that, we see set path is being called. So obviously what's, what's happening here is we're doing a set. So if we take a look at the set get, right? And we don't really need a get for this. Uh, but if you did want to do it, then it's just, we're just doing a get, and we'll, I believe it's just return. We're just returning uh, our value right back at it, right? Uh, but the get isn't important for us here. What is, is going to be the set, and you create a set just like this. Value can be whatever you want, but using the word value is just the most common thing that people use. Just like using I in a for loop is just the most common thing that everybody uses so we're gonna access the set and of course the first thing we want to do here is we want to do path equals a value because this is the actual set that is happening right we're set we're calling set on this variable we have a new value and we're assigning it to that variable so at a base level this is what's going on every time we assign it there in the inspector now, what we want to happen is we want these errors to pop up. Now, for the moment, and we're going to loop back to this set, uh, but before we can, I can show you the next set there, we have to actually create our a function. And there is a function that already exists inside of uh, Gato. If I just come down, there is a function called underscore underscore get underscore configuration underscore warnings. And this returns a packed string array. Now, if you were using this in version three, I believe it's just a uh, it's considered a pool string array. And then I'm creating a variable here for my warning. That is a packed string array that we can return. And the error I'm getting here is just because I'm not returning anything. So if I just come down here and say return warning, all those errors would go away. And that's fine. The problem is the warning is empty, so it's not going to make any difference, right? We're not going to have any warnings. It's just going to look just like it is now with no pop-ups, no anything. So we need to actually insert a warning in here. And right now, our first warning is going to be if path is empty, 
and it needs us to assign it to something, right? So if path is empty, if path is null, you know, things along that line. And all we have to say for that is if not path. That's it. And now we need to add this warning into our uh, patch string array in order to return a warning, right? That way our warning isn't empty when it gets returned so we can actually display something. All we have to do is just do grab our warning dot append, just like an array, pass in a string of some sort. Uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy what I had here before. Do, 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 copy, paste that. Path variable is not set in the inspector. And if you want, you can even use line breaks, All right? Create a new line. I'll do two and say, set the, or I'll say assign, assign the path variable in, no, I'll just say assign the path variable. All right, so it's as simple as that. Whoops. All right, so all we have is we're calling this built-in function. We're creating a warning of a packed string array because it is exp expecting a packed string array to be returned. If our path has not been assigned to anything, then we're going to add a warning that says the path variable has not been set in the inspector. And then we're going to return warning outside that of statement. And by doing that, I'm just going to go ahead and delete the magic controller out of, the, out of there and add a new one. We can see now we have this triangle pop up. And if we ho hover our mouse over, it says node configuration warning. Path variable not set in the inspector. And you can see I have uh, two new lines in there. Now, maybe you just want to have one new line uh, or maybe you don't want to have that extra in there. You just want to have the short form bullet points. That's completely up to you. But you can see it's in there. That's fantastic. So we go ahead, let's fix it. We'll assign it to its parent of Node2D. And what's that? We, we've assigned it, but the error is still there. Well, that's a problem. How can we fix that? We need that to actually update. Well, this is where we need to come back to our set variable here. So we've set the path, we set the value, or we set the path to our new value. Um, but we, what we actually need to do after that is we need to uh, ask the editor to update the warnings. And to do this, we can. there is another built-in function that we can call here inside of the set. Uh, update underscore configuration underscore warnings. Save that. And I have to delete this so that can update. All right, so we bring it in. We have our magic controller. We have our warning. Hey, path is not set in the inspector. Let's go ahead and assign it. And the warning disappears because once we've set it, we've called the update configuration warnings. And that's going to request or that's going to go ahead and run through the get configuration on the node. It's going to check. Oh, this statement is false because path has been set. So we're not going to add anything. So warning is still an empty pack string array. We're returning an empty warning. And since it's empty, there's nothing to display. All right. So that's how you can do it. If you want to do something with, with the variables. Now you can do this as well with something such as nodes, right? So if you want, uh, like our character body, we get a warning that says, Hey, you might want to have a collision body 2d attached to this. And it's going to sit there and continuously yell at you unless you have one up there. And that's fine. Also, I think I said collision body instead of collision shape. Um, but you can also do that with parents, right? So you can be like, hey, I have to be a parent or sorry, I have to be a child of this kind of node. And you can easily do that, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say create a new variable and just get my parent. And with that, I'm going to check with another if statement. We're going to say if parent is null. So if you're making this the root of your scene, um, then it should come back null. Otherwise, maybe you got some other weird thing going on that shouldn't be happening. Or not parent is character body 2D. So since our parent is a node 2D, we're going to get an error on this loan, even if the inspector is set. And then I'm just adding a warning here. 
that simply just says, this must be a child of a character body 2D, consider making a child of a character body 2D node. And you can see we've added two warnings, just appending it like a normal array. And when we return it, we're actually gonna get these uh, appearing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that, add our new one. And you can see we have uh, a couple of red dots on that yellow triangle, showing that we have multiple errors. And we can see each error is pointed out with a bullet point. So we see child must be a child of a character body 2D. And path variable is not set in inspector. Well, let's go ahead, we can come in, set that. That's set. All right, one of those red dots went away. So now we only have one error when we look at it. Node must be a child of a character body 2D. All right, well, let's add a character body 2D. And if the character body was a child of the magic, that's not gonna work because remember, we're checking if the parent is not a character body, and then we throw an error. So we actually need to do this the other way around. We need to say magic controller is a child of the character body, and now that error goes away. And you can do it the same way uh, as a child, right? So if I were to come down here and we'll say, we can add another one, so we'll say if, Uh, we can go ahead and get our children. So that uh, give me one set. All right, so I've gone back and I've re restructured the child section here. And this is to avoid some uh, errors and issues that um, that would have appeared the other way. Uh, for example, if the animated sprite was not the first child, then our error would still appear. And if we had just like a note 2D in there, that would still trigger it as being, uh, as not having an error. Um, so what I've done here, um, so inside of our if get children, right? So if we have children, then I create a variable called found animated. We'll run through a for loop going through all the children. If child.get class is an animated sprite 2D. Then we'll set found animated to true and break out of our for, for loop. If not animate found animated, right? So if we don't have any animated sprites, then we'll append this warning. And else, and that else would be if we don't have any children, then we just append our warning to it. And you'll see here now, if we come in here, node 2D, we type in, we go to our magic class. We see we have our three errors. We can solve our first one by assigning our path. One error gone. We take a look. We still have to get, uh, has to be a child of a character body. We've done that. We have one error left. Animated Sprite 2D. All right, well, let's put a note as a child. The error is still there. Animated Sprite as a child of the node. Our error is still there. Child of the magic. And it's there. The error disappears. All right, so that'll cover the parent, the child, and assigning variable requirements. And that those three things should be able to cover pretty well anything that you may need to set your own warnings for. But all right, and that'll do it for this week. Take care, have yourselves a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next one, next week. Yes. <laughs>